In this video, we're going to be checking out a USB hub for a 2024 Mac Mini M4. And this hub has come from a company called Pulltop. And they reached out to me. They said, hey, you've been reviewing a lot of hubs lately. How about you review ours too? So that's what I'm doing. Now, as always, this review is my opinions and my opinions only. The manufacturer has no influence over the review and no money is exchanged hands. So let's get to it. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out this USB-C hub. And like I said, I've been reviewing several hubs, hubs that go underneath the Mac Mini, hubs that go above the Mac Mini. And this one has some features that I haven't had on some of the other ones before, so I wanted to try it out. It may look like just a normal hub, but look, it's also got an M.2 NVMe SSD in there. It's got HDMI, audio, several USB connectors, and I think it's even got a card reader built in. And here's some of the specs. It uses USB-C for the input, which is USB 3.2 Gen 2. The HDMI port is capable of 4K at 60 hertz. It's got three USB 2s at 480 megabits. It's got an SD card slot, an audio jack, and the SSD that will support M.2 NVMEs. And I think it's got several different sizes it can hold. Because of that USB-C interface, it is capped out at 10 gigabits, but that's still plenty fast. And it'll support up to a four terabyte drive. And it's also got that neat little notch right here cut out so that you can much more easily access that power button on the Mac Mini than when it's just sitting here on the desk. So let's go ahead and open this up and check it out. All right, so in the box is the hub itself. We'll take a look at that in just a second. It's got a host cable here, nice and short, braided. That's going to be cool. Got some instructions, of course. And then here is a little screwdriver and some mounting hardware and looks like some thermal pad for your SSD. So looking at this itself, the first thing that I can tell you is these rubber feet on the bottom here, they are very secure, very nice. This thing ain't going anywhere. And it's got a rubber pad up here too. Let's see how well that works. I'll put this guy on here. And yeah, this thing, pretty sturdy. It's not, it's not going anywhere. And I think it kind of this this ring here kind of cups the uh, bottom here, and it won't obstruct the cooling at all. And I do like the fact. Let me go ahead and get this facing the right, right way. That once you put this on here, again, very nice and sturdy, that you can reach that power button a heck of a lot easier. So looking at the front here, we got the two USB A ports. They're labeled mouse and keyboard, but you can use them for just about anything. Then we got a SD card and a TF card slot right there in the front, easy to get to. On the back, we got another USB 2.0. We've got the host connection over here, audio connection, and then the HDMI output. Now, I had someone recently on one of the other videos mention that USB-A is ancient and nobody uses it anymore. Well, that's just not true. There's plenty of things that require USB-A inputs. It could be as simple as a thumb drive, even though there are thumb drives coming out with USB-C connectors. It could be a printer, if you have a printer that's not wireless. Or, in my case, it could be my favorite keyboard. I still love this keyboard here with the 10 key on it, and it is definitely wired. I don't have to worry about charging my keyboard all the time. I love the convenience of the wireless keyboard, but this still is my favorite Apple keyboard of all time. So plenty of inputs, two USBs on the front, one on the back, HDMI, audio, and card reader. So we're off to a good start. The build quality on this thing is great, very solid. It matches the design, of course, of the Mac Mini perfectly. And that leads us to underneath here, looking at the SSD slot. So let me grab this screwdriver here. Let me grab a SSD drive, and we'll go ahead and pop one in here. All right, so I took the lid off here, and that exposes the NVMe enclosure. And the, the bag came with two of these little mounting studs here. And it looks like it just keyholes into any one of these. The instruction book, I think, may be from a different version, because the instruction book just said that there'd be a, a little rubber thing that you just push the drive down onto, and I've seen that before. But this uses an actual, like, a keyhole little mounting hole there, and then it comes with the right size screw to attach down to it. So I'm gonna use this Kingston one terabyte NVMe drive, and I'm not gonna put the thermal pad on it because I move these things around from 
docking station to docking station to try them out. So if you look, you got a notch here on your drive, and you've got a notch right there. You just want to make sure those line up. Put this thing at about 45 degree angle. Wiggle it until it's fully seated. And then if you do everything right, that should line right up with that. Very good. And I'm going to use my trusty Strabido screwdriver that comes in this kit here. I use it for everything, and I'm using it because it's got a magnetic tip, and I don't want to lose this tiny little screw inside this docking station. So it's nice that they included a screwdriver in case you don't have one, but if you're going to be doing this a lot, spend the 20 bucks or so on this kit. It's got every screwdriver tip you'd ever need for working on computers, and I've been using it for three years. I still love it. So that was it. Let's go ahead and put the drive door back on. It's got another screw the same size. I'll use my trusty Strabido screwdriver again. And I'm using the Phillips Zero bit, which works perfect for this size screw. And we are done. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and plug this thing into the Mac Mini and turn it on and play around with it. All right, so I've got the Mac Mini here plugged in with the host cable. And one thing to note, other than some of the other docks I've used that had a power cable that goes to the host, this is powering this docking station right off of the Mac Mini itself, just a single cable. So it's plugged in the back there, and if everything's going right, I've got it going to this iPad here, which I'm just using as a monitor. So let's go ahead and switch over to the capture, and hopefully you can see the screen now. So here it is right here. It's mounted that NVMe drive here. I just named it NVMe Dock. So we can open that up. And I'm just going to do a quick, what I call real world speed test, where I grab three big files. And this is about six gigabytes worth of video. I'm just going to drag this over and see how fast it copies over. So three, two, one, drop. And it looks like about less than 10 seconds. For the whole thing to go that's real time right there and they are all copied so that it would be the right speed test how fast can this thing write stuff to that disk that i installed in there and that's pretty quick so let's go ahead and just create a dummy folder down here in the desktop i'm going to do a read test here where i grab the same three files i'm going to drag them over here to copy them into that dummy folder which is just on the desktop and three two one drop about the same speed, maybe a tiny bit faster reading and writing that stuff over to the internal disk. So like I said, just a uh, quick and dirty speed test. Sometimes you just want to know how fast it's going to copy stuff over that you drag over there. And these USB-C connections, they're just blazing fast these days. If this was a Thunderbolt dock, yes, it would be quicker at that. But still, I think this is pretty darn good. So the next thing I want to do is go back here and plug in. I've got another HDMI cable here, which I'm gonna plug into the docking station because the first HDMI cable that I'm capturing to is plugged into the Mac Mini itself. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually gonna allow me to have a second screen or not, or if it's just another way to plug in a monitor. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And we will see what happens. All right, so over here to my left, I've got another screen, and right now it's just mirroring the original screen. So let's go into settings and go to displays. And yes, it sees two monitors here. So the Elgato is the main one I'm capturing to right now, and the LG Ultra Gear is the other one. So let's see what my options are here for mirroring. So I can stop mirroring. And now on my capture screen, it looks like it went to the second. So over here, if you're seeing my capture, that is just a secondary display. And then my main display, I'll show you real quick. Look past all the junk that I've got on my desk. But this right here is the first one. So there's the first display. Here's the second display. And it is definitely spanning two different desktops. So that's pretty good. That's something that you couldn't really do very easily with the like the M1, the M2 Mac Minis, but this M4 looks like it's working right out of the box. So very nice. We've got good looking hub here. 
it's functional in the sense that it allows me to get to that power button easier and it's definitely capable of doing two screens of video with that HDMI output there gives me all the inputs that I need for my different USB and SD card type connections and this this dock right here I've got no concern about it like being wobbly or shaky or the Mac Mini being unstable on it. Now I believe I've read somewhere that these USB ports here that are USB 2.0 480 megabits are like that way purposely instead of being USB 3 because the USB 3 ports on some of these hubs was messing with the Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi built into the Mac Mini M4 was had a problem with the uh, the chipset or something with that higher speed USB ports and this one does not seem to have that. I haven't had any problems using this with my Wi-Fi. In fact, let's go back to capture and I'll bring up a speed test. And let's see how it goes. So about 126 megabits down, 140 megabits up, I'd say that's working just fine. So this little hub here, definitely a handy little device. Gives you that extra hard drive there, up to four terabytes of SSD. Gives you all the ports you need, and it just works great. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. If you got something out of this, or if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate that. Go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. Lots of other reviews there. Lots of other videos featuring this Mac Mini M4. And I've got some more coming up, so stay tuned. But that's going to do it for this one. I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.